What's up, YouTube? Come boss here back in another video. We're talking about cars, money, investing. Today, we're talking about Formula One. So, I've been previewing about Formula One investing in a, a couple of weeks ago, right? So, finally, the cars has arrived. So, I just want to just touch a bit about my investing strategy. Not necessarily something that I, uh, people necessarily agree with because I, I did talk to some people who are in this space about what the cars are looking at and or what are angles that they are they're in and uh, where they think the market is going and things like that. And I kind of have a bit of a different view compared to most of them and normally my unconventional views sometimes are proven um, more right than wrong most of the time so um, I stand by this particular strategy at this present moment um, unless something actually changes but I'm uh, pretty excited to just uh, share with you guys uh, my thoughts on this so uh, what I have here is a couple of slabs right so these are all here today and there is a common theme between all these slabs here and I'm going to touch a bit about uh, why I invested in these particular cards and where I think that uh, these are going. So n don't take this as a pure investment advice. This is just basically me sharing my point of view and my um, perspective on Formula One. So you guys know GP Miami was uh, quite a big hit. There was a lot of buzz that's going around that particular Grand Prix. Lots of celebrities, lots of news and also a lot of focus on the collectibles. I think that the interest in Formula One cards did um, spike up. Uh, quite, a, quite a fair bit I think over that particular weekend there was a lot of interest but of course uh, we're talking about uh, there were also big big uh, transactions I think Topps Dynasty 2021 just uh, released and of course we had the Topps Sapphire Topps Chrome Sapphire 2021 as well so lots and lots of new products are dropping uh, very very quickly and people are picking up uh, very very quickly as well and I think the prices for sealed products has jumped up uh, tremendously I didn't get into any one of those um, particularly because I'm kind of focused on the original flagship products which is uh, coming up from 2020 and Topps Chrome 2020 in particular because I think that there will be you know of course uh, new products are going to continue to come up you know, in the future right 2022 2023 and so on and so forth but people will kind of go back to the where it all started right in 2020 the original top chrome or maybe even the top chrome sapphire but i kind of like the og top chrome and that's where i'm focusing on today and i did did a preview uh, previously in one of my earlier videos that i talked about purchasing uh this lewis hamilton psa 8 uh, purple chrome uh, refractor and i'm going to talk about more cars besides this uh, lewis hamilton here right so first of all let me just slide up and show you the cars that i have in front of me so obviously the aforementioned lewis hamilton psa 8 i got another psa 8 here there's a max verstappen psa 8 purple refractor as well psa 9 verstappen this is a charles leclerc still can't get a name right psa 8 purple refractor and Lando Norris PSA 8.5 purple refractor, right? So as you can tell, right, the common team, there are a couple of common teams here, you know, and these a bunch of slabs here, right? So I'm just gonna try and fan this out as much as I can, right? So obviously these are all purple refractors and these are all numbered out of 399, as you can see here, right, 399, right? So purple refractors, first year Topps Chrome 2020, purple refractors out of 399. The selection of drivers here you can tell right so these are all more the popular ones the ones that's you know sitting on the the front of the grid most of the time so of course you have the the the, the goat in the sense right lewis hamilton you have max verstappen current world champion the winner of the gp miami race you know charles Leclerc, whereby he's actually lead, leading the driver standings and up and coming lando norris so the one that's missing here will be george russell right so and I got a couple of his uh, cards uh, coming in as well. So, but these are the ones I wanted to preview today. So, when I spoke to a couple of people who was, has been around in this Formula One space, and, and I, I told them like, "Hey, um, I'm buying into purple refractors out 399." He's saying, "Why are you doing that? Especially you're buying lower grades like PSA eight and PSA nine. So, I'm think I was looking at the entry price, and I spoke about this in my earlier video, right? Whereas those guys tell me, no, you're, you're doing all wrong. You got to buy the, the big stuff, right? You talk about the autograph patches, card, the dynasty cards, right? Those are going for like $5,000, $10,000, $15,000, you know? So for those popular drivers as well, like Lewis Hamilton talking about easily $30,000, $35,000, like not something that everybody has the money to go in. Like, but I truly get it that if you're really a true Formula One fan, right? You're a real Lewis Hamilton fan or, or Max Verstappen fan, you would go out and find those kind of pieces and if you're an investor coming to the space and you're targeting those as your you know buyers potential buyers yes that will be kind of like a strategy but 
that's a very expensive strategy to go into, right? So if you have the opportunity to bump into, let's say, for example, Max Verstappen, 2020 Topps Dynasty uh, autograph patch card, number out of 10, for let's say $5,000, right? I'm just picking a number, right? So it's worth way more than that. Would you buy into it? Of course you'll buy into it, right? Because there, definitely there's lots and lots of upside for that. But would you buy it for, let's say, like $25,000 today and to hold it for maybe another, let's say, three years and then hopefully sell it for $50,000 or, or more, right? The potential is there, you know, Max Verstappen definitely has a long, uh, bright future ahead for him and for to, you know, to invest that kind of money and to see that kind of potential returns. There is definitely a valid reason to it. But when you talk, talk about how much capital it has to sink into that particular card, right? $25,000, for example, to hold for three years, that's a lot of money into one card without much liquidity that you can actually get from that one card until you actually sell it like three years later. Looking back at these refractors, right? So obviously, if uh, those people who are not aware for Topps Chrome 2020, there are a couple of parallels, right? Aside from the normal silver refractors, that's not numbered. That's the refractors out of 399. There's the gold refractors that's out of um, 50. And there is the orange refractor out of 25. And there's a red refractor that's out of five. Of course, you have the super refractors and you know, gold waves up 70th anniversary, all, all those kind of different parallels, right? But I'm focused on the serial number cards. And you're looking at mainly the purples, the golds, and the orange, right? So one thing I've observed, you know, looking at this market for the last, I would say, you know, four to six weeks, the gold and the orange, especially for the better drivers, I don't come up very often. If they did, right, it's a kind of like a big, massive fight for the particular card. Now, would the price of those cards, you know, let's say like a Charles Leclerc uh, PSA 8 uh, orange, right, that sold for me, I think, what, $4,000, $4,500? Is it worth that kind of money? Maybe, right? Because the number out of 50, and there's a, of course, there's lots, there's lots of Charles Leclerc fan, but would, is there any, you know, strong potential for that card to continue to grow from 4500 Such a high price tag for PSA 8. Of course there is, right? But to what kind of multiples or to what kind of percentages, that's, that's um, a big question mark. And again, similar to the example I gave on the Max Verstappen uh, autograph patch for $25,000, you're going to sink that capital in if you're actually investing and not actually a true Charles Leclerc fan. So you can't, if you scale back down, you want to go into cars that have a bit more flexibility, a bit more, a bit more liquidity, and definitely uh, easily transactable, right? So so here comes the purple refractors, right? Our 399. Now, if you're targeting like F1, new collectors, new investors coming to the space, right? They're not coming with huge, huge budgets, you know, right? They're not coming with like $10,000 to throw or $20,000 to throw. They're coming with small budgets, you know, getting a feel of the space, you know, buying the cars that they love, buying the drivers that they love, right? Of course, you go through the natural progression of buying base and then silver refractors and so on and so forth, right? So if you're talking about affordable range, right, why not, you know, go into uh, the greater cars of... Uh, Real copies of base cards and silver refractors, of course, very high population, right? You know, look to the left, look to the right, that's less always available on eBay and stuff like that. Purple refractors kind of like it's a one step above that particular uh, range, right? So it's not like these kind of cards come up all the time, but they're not as scarce as the orange and as well as the gold. So these are still available once in a while, but not as readily available as the silver. So it makes this kind of like a little sweet spot because. Like I mentioned earlier, whenever an orange or a, book, a gold comes out, it's a massive fighting and the price keeps on spiking up. So not something that you want to do when you're actually trying to invest in a card. So you kind of go, this purple refractors kind of like operate in a safe space, I would say. So it makes a good investment, uh, I would say, a range or investment band uh, for me. And the price tag is fairly reasonable. I talked about this Lewis Hamilton, you know, coming in entry price of fifteen hundred. It's still like you know more than a thousand bucks, but you're talking about the gold here, right? So. Here, a lot of people talk about PSA uh, eights, you know, not being very popular here. So you look at here, just one PSA nine, all PSA eights here, and one PSA eight point five. But the thing about purple refractors, and I think that as well as the first year top screen, there were a lot of condition issues, especially on the back edge. I think we talk to people, or you read some of the forums, they know that some of these there's this little chipping on the back edge that actually affects the overall grade. So eight is kind of acceptable. Obviously, nine's better and ten's great, right? So there is a large premium paid on better cards. But again, if your target market is, you know, trying to deal with the entry-level investors or entry-level collectors, you know, eight's generally fine, right? Nine's better, eight's fine. So I wouldn't stick on one grade. Like, definitely, I'll be looking at nines uh, for sure, right? So that's why I picked up this uh, Verstappen nine, right? But eights is generally uh, at a price point that's fairly reasonable, this juncture and 
you know, to look at, for example, like let's say like Lee's Louis Hamilton at 1500 does it have potential to go up to like $2,000 in the short term? Perhaps, right? Perhaps. And does it have potential to go up, let's say like 2500 in the next one to two years? Perhaps as well. And you take a, and you look at your percentage points of view, right? It's almost the same percentage points of view whereby if you buy a Max Verstappen uh, uh, autograph patch card for 25000 and hopefully it goes up to $40,000. It's the same kind of percentages, no doubt. That card is a flashier card. It's a bigger card. But definitely, you know, Hamilton say have more liquidity. Even if you want to cash out some of the pieces as you go along to reinvest back into other kind of pieces um, in the F1 space or other spaces, you can definitely do that because you have the flexibility and the liquidity of multiple pieces to operate with. The only downside of doing that is like, you know, it's not the flashy thing. There's a lot of work, right? You know, who who doesn't love having a, like a patch autograph card out of 10 you know, to patch it on, on eBay or on Instagram and then, you know, put it up. But chances are, you know, if you didn't pull out, pull out a pack, if you paid hard money for it to invest in it, you're definitely sinking in for a long term. And that's what Formula One's about, right? Sinking in for a long term because the drivers, you know, unlike, unlike let's say, like basketball, right? The players in basketball, yes, you do have some consistent guys, right? The Steph Curry, um, the, the Lucas, the LeBrons. These are guys that are consistent. But we talk about Formula One, right? The, the, the pool of drivers, you know, compared to the pool of players, is even smaller than that. You know, you're just looking at these these few names, right? At every single race, right? You have Leclerc, you have uh, Verstappen, right? You have uh, Lewis Hamilton, you have George Russell. You have these same guys over and over again. And that's because of the fact of the sport itself, right? The, and if for those guys, for those guys who have not done any research on Formula One, on the race itself, on how the how the race actually works, or how the background within the cars itself, right? The, the sport is actually not on the level terms. Okay, do, do look it up and try try and understand a bit more about the sport. It's not like it's not a level playing field for everyone, right? So Ferrari has a certain advantage, you know, Mercedes has a certain advantage. So look it up, and you will always see that these guys are the one that's you know hovering around the podium. So Naturally, if you were to invest, you would kind of like just stick this one. It's a very small pool of players, right? Small or small pool of drivers. So of course, everybody's just buying the same group of people. So there is no wrong investing this one. So like this group, that it's either it's either one of these guys who will do well every single race, right? It's just that which one will have more higher popularity than the others. Of course, you know some people are talking about you know buying up on the. I would say like the Formula 2 drivers or, you know, or the fringe drivers, you know, Pierre Gasly being one of them, right? There, there is potential, there is hypes on all of this, but again, uh, the, the hub that they need to get over, it's pretty big, right? Compared to these guys established. So, of course, uh, entry points for that one is pretty low. Definitely, I would call it more of a very high speculation rather than investing. These are more for investing, right? Or, or flipping, if let's say um, certain ones does well, like, you know, Max Verstappen, I think if you pull off take would to overtake uh, Leclerc in the next couple of races, right? I would see that his prices will go up. Right. So if you're holding on to a big car, you know, will will you sell it when that actually happens? You might not, you might keep it till the end of the season, right? Whereas for these kind of cars, right, Poco Refractors for example, right, it's easy to move one or two pieces and still maintain on a couple more. Right. So therefore I'm high on these purple refractors and continue to accumulate more on these. So this will be my one of my strategies in terms of Formula One at this juncture. Of course, I will consider other options as well. I, I won't rule out you know buying those autograph patches if there was opportunity to buy them at good prices, right? They are very expensive. They are very expensive, right? You know, I always will benchmark these Formula One driver cards, right? You know, spending like you know 10k for one card versus buying a, a solid LeBron or a solid Kobe or a Jordan or even a solid Marvel card, right? For say, you know, I, I would. Because I'm operating in so many markets, right? It's always that same amount of money you know, to deploy in the best possible way. So I wouldn't say Formula One ranks below, but I always treat looking at every opportunity equal and to find out which one offers the best potential return. But for now, you know, this is my double in um, Formula One space, and I just wanted to share you guys. You know, just when you know, don't want to be the guy that says, "Okay, I'm going to invest in Formula One," but never talk about a car selling investing. All right. Hope this is a good insight for you. Okay, uh, to all my non-Formula One fans, right? Just maybe this is a just pretty good uh, information for you on maybe tips about investing strategy in general. All right, do like to subscribe. You know, all sorts of different content. I got one very special content coming up really, really soon. I'm very excited to share that story with you guys. All right, do like and subscribe for this channel. Thanks for watching. Couples out.